Hi, this is David, and I'm going to be giving you a little bit of information about how to teach yin yoga. So without further ado, let's go ahead and begin. So this is one of my favorite books. This is the Bernie Clark Complete Guide to Yin Yoga. It's one of the most thorough yin yoga books I've found out there. I'm a big fan of some of the stuff from Paul Grilly, and he has an amazing video series. But when it comes to the books, this has been my favorite book for a number of reasons and um, I would like to get into some of those. So let's go ahead and whoop, we are going back. And you can see uh, my daughter's poop books, which is funny. Okay, so let's go ahead and jump in. Now, there's a lot of good information in this book that talks about specific uh, ways to break down in yoga as you teach it. And you can see it's got a good amount of uh, form warnings. It goes into a little bit of the history. It talks about the yin and the yang. Now, yin's going to be the more static. Yang's going to be the more dynamic movement where it's going to be more consistent. Yin's going to be very still. We are holding these postures for five to eight minutes. We're allowing for hyaluronic acid to go and help the ligaments, the joints, and the bones to be a little bit more lubricated. So when you move, you can have a little bit more freedom, less pain, more range of motion, and you can treat the area. And this is what this is kind of talking about. This is a book that I bought for numerous friends and family members. I purchased this book well over six times. So um, I'm a big fan of it. I've read it multiple times in and out. One of my favorite parts of it is it gives you an opportunity to look at the poses. And we're going to construct the sequence right now with some of these poses. So let's go ahead and do that. Okay. So right here, this is butterfly. And this is really great how Let's go back. While we go back, I want to mention how with this book, there's a lot of opportunity to look at specific postures and see exactly some of the ways it's going to benefit you or maybe your students or your clients or your patients. And you can explain it to them. There were times um, where I would um, read out some of these passages in class straight from the book. Often I memorize them and I already have a good knowing of them, but it's really great. Like, for example, butterfly. We're getting in these postures and holding them for five minutes. So that gives you a lot of time to talk about what's happening to the body here. So we can discuss how this is a nice way to stretch the lower back. If the legs are straight, the feet are further away from the growing, the hamstrings will get more of a stretch. This is good for the kidneys, prostate gland, removes heaviness in the testes, regulates period, can aggravate sciatica. It is actually helpful for sciatica, but it can aggravate it. So you want to be careful, avoid dropping the head down um, if the neck has suffered whiplash or reverse uh, curvature. Okay. If you have any lower back disorders, which do not allow flexion of the spine, then don't allow the spine to round. You know, it talks about getting into the pose. From a seated position, bring the soles of your feet together. Now, this is really important as you're teaching a class like this. I like to give a visual and go into the posture myself then get up, walk around the room, help people get in. We have five minutes again in these postures and we are going to be using props. And this book does a great job of allowing for different types of adaptations. So we should see in a lot of these postures, we're going to see a lot of adaptations. So there's alternatives here of what you can do. And there should be a few pictures of alternatives in a lot of these coming out of the pose. It tells you exactly what to do. This is a very good book for teaching. So as you're teaching this, you can really give your clients and students an opportunity to be safe and get into a great state. Okay. Joints affected. Recommended the whole time, three to five minutes or longer. A lot of times five to eight is great for this. Um, for the hyaluronic acid, it does take about two to five minutes in myofascial uh, release massage. They tell us about two to five minutes. 
Yin yoga usually in this book will say three to five minutes, but around two to three minutes is at least what we want to do for a yin posture to start creating a hyaluronic acid. And ideally five to eight would be more, um, more, um, efficient for you. If you can make the time for that with the deep breathing. Okay. Talks about the meridians and organs affected, which is fantastic. This also talks about the balance of the igna and pignula nadis. And this is really great for creating a homeostasis in the body. You're going to see a lot of this uh, posture, this butterfly in the Hatha yoga for that reason. It's going to talk about how you can stimulate more a specific lines of the body. Okay, let's go ahead, move on a little bit more. It can be done after meals as long as the head does not touch the floor. So you can do this right after eating. Okay. It's nice for pregnant women because the legs are abducted, providing space for the belly. Okay. We have half butterfly here. There's additional pictures, additional things you can do. And you have poses like Hamel and whatnot. Now I want to go into a sequence. If I was doing a 15 minute sequence and I'm doing two to three poses, what I would do once we uh, get up, here we go. Let's go back to our table of contents. I would start with butterfly because you do not need to be warmed up for butterfly. It's actually a very nice way to stretch without requiring loose hamstrings. Give this about three to five minutes. Getting into the postures, taking the deep breaths. Move on to still focusing on the hips and the back. We're going to go in the square. The square has a couple of different ways to look at it. It's a nice preparation for Lotus. Deep opening of the hips, decompresses up the lower back. And you can see here how with square, you can move forward, you can inch forward, and you can get a little bit more of a deeper stretch. Now, if you have the, flex, uh, the flexibility for this, you can actually go ahead and grab your ankle, put this on your knee. You can see with this image, the visual, the woman has her... It looks like her left ankle on her right knee. Okay. Now I would do square both sides. And at that point, pretty quickly, we have pretty much wrapped up our 15 minutes that fast. So then we're going to move on to Savasana. In here, we would do our dead man's pose, give it a three, five minutes, however long necessary, depending on the time of your class. But there you go. Right then and there, that's a yin session for you. So teaching yin can be very rewarding. It's not that hard. You just want to make sure you know what you're doing. And um, hopefully you got some nice tips and tools from this recording. So 